friends, Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to my channel. I am Dr. Maryam Hussain and I make videos related to dentistry and medicine. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram for more amazing and interesting content and I'll share the link with you guys in the description box. So let's begin with today's video. The topic of my discussion today is post-op instructions and by post-op instructions I mean the post extraction, post wisdom tooth extractions or any kind of surgical extractions and simple extractions. The instructions which you need to provide to the patient and the management of the site itself. So let's begin with the topic. Okay, so now after extracting the tooth as a dental surgeon, what you need to do is first of all, you need to irrigate the area. Now, why irrigation is important, for example, if there is any kind of uh, bone fragments present or detached tooth uh, tissue, or, no, sorry, the soft tissue present or any kind of debris which is uh, or, or the fragments of calculus are present in the tooth socket so they can be removed easily with the help of irrigation, forceful irrigation. Now, moving on towards the second point that we need to take care of is removing all the necrosed tissue that is surrounding the uh, extraction site and also the granulation tissue which is present in the tooth socket or around the uh, extraction site. Now, we need to keep one thing in our mind and that is we do not need to aggressively curettage the socket, okay? Now, extraction site in itself is a kind of wound. We do not need to create another wound by uh, aggressively uh, doing the curettage of the socket. So it is contraindicated and we need to take care of that. Now, what we need to do, which is the most important thing that we, you know, kind of forget after doing the extraction is we need to apply the pressure onto the sides, like onto the buccal and the lingual sides. You need to compress the buccal and lingual plates after extracting the tooth what happens if we do not do this step is that there is going to be a kind of undercut created in that area after the healing and that may interfere with the prosthesis placement after the uh, you know uh, for replacing that area okay now after that after you have done all of these four steps what you're going to do is you are going to suture the area now this is very important if we have uh, done a kind of surgical extraction but also some people do prefer using sutures in simple extraction as well now one thing you need to keep in mind is that something which is really necessary we need to do suturing from papilla to papilla like for example if this is the extraction site and here are the papillas you are going to provide a stitch in here and here okay and if necessary and if this area is you know really very wide open this kind this area is very wide open so you can also place a kind of stitch in the middle as well okay but these pep uh, the stitches on the papilla are really important and these are very necessary in case of surgical extractions these are compulsory so now the next step is we need to establish hemostasis and we need to create a good clot in that area because establishment of a good clot is leading to is going to lead to the establishment of good healing in that area so we need to provide a stable clot now for providing a stable clot we can also do some steps and we need to ask the patient to also follow our instructions so that the uh, healing is not interfered and the clot stays firm in that area so what we need to do, what we are going to do and what we are going to ask the patient to do is that we need to place a gauze pack. Now this is very important. Immediately after doing the extraction and immediately following uh, all of those uh, previous steps, now what we need to do is that we need to place a gauze pack. Now what I prefer is that I take a gauze piece and I wet it in uh, water and then I squeeze it so that there is no further ability in the gauze to be compressed. When it is quite firm, then I just place it in the area of tooth extraction. Now for, uh, now, for example, here is the area, hollow area of tooth extraction. Here is the adjacent tooth, here is the adjacent tooth, and this is the area of extraction. And here is the opposing tooth. Now, what I need to do is that if I need to place a gauze pack, I'm going to place a firm gauze pack in this area like this. It this area needs to be filled properly with the gauze 
so that when the patient bites on it this is going to compress and it is going to lead to bleeding uh, this is going to stop the bleeding so what we need to do is that we need to apply uh, we are going to ask the patient to apply gentle and continued pressure on this area for at least 30 minutes okay for 30 minutes and then we can ask the patient to uh, throw the gauze and uh, gauze piece and just use another gauze for that purpose Okay, so now what instructions we need to give to the patient? Uh, the things that I discussed previously were the things that we need to do as a dental surgeon after extraction. Now I'm going to tell you that what you need to tell the patient, what you need to instruct the patient in order to take care of the extraction site. So first thing first is we need to ask the patient that he doesn't have to spit. No spitting is allowed no sucking on the straw is allowed no sucking on the cigarettes is allowed okay so first thing is that due to spitting and due to sucking it creates a pressure in oral cavity and this pressure basically leads to dislodgement of the clot and it interferes with the healing so we're not going to spit we're not going to suck onto the straw okay now what we need to do is that we need to inform the patient that there is going to be some amount of bleeding and uh, the, you know the saliva tinged with a little bit of blood will come for at least you know one day or for 24 hours and we need to tell the patient that this is completely normal this will occur and he doesn't need to panic for that but if there is going to be some a little bit more bleeding so what he needs to do at the home at home is that he can use a piece of gauze for pressure packing or what he can do is that he can use a cold wet tea bag over the area and we are going to ask the patient to bite for 30 minutes onto the gauze piece or onto that cold wet tea bag. Now that cold wet tea bag is going to have tannins and tannins basically reduce blood, uh, blood leakage. Okay and one more thing that we need to tell the patient is that he needs to avoid you know uh, irritating that area with his tongue tip or you know disturbing that uh, the extraction site again and again by rubbing his tongue in that area so what we're going to do next is that we're going to ask the patient to keep his head elevated on several pillows for at least first 12 to 24 hours this what this will do is that it is going to avoid uh, you know a lot of pressure in the area of extraction and also it will avoid uh, bleeding and oozing of a lot of blood in the extraction site so we also need to ask the patient to avoid smoking for the first 12 to 24 hours as this can interfere with the healing and it can cause pain and it can lead to bleeding also we need to ask the patient that he doesn't need to rinse his mouth really forcefully uh, for the first 12 hours and also he needs to avoid brushing for 12 hours as um, you know this has a risk of um, again uh, damaging the area and creating another wound at the extraction site and also one of the most important tips that we need to ask the patient to do is that to avoid nose blowing we need to tell him that if the sinus is involved if uh, for example the sinus lining is uh, ruptured during the extraction or there is another kind of sinus involvement so what we need to tell the patient is that you you need to keep in mind that you don't have to blow your nose this is very important because it can lead to um, uh, again it can lead to the rupturing of the sinus lining and that is going to create another problem for a patient so we need to tell him to keep in mind about this complication okay so after 12 to 24 hours the patient can brush uh, the, uh, his teeth gently but uh, he needs to avoid the extraction site as i mentioned before this can otherwise this can lead to a uh, creation of another wound and also he needs to avoid any kind of strenuous exercises for the first 12, 24 hours as this can lead to high blood pressure and also it can increase the bleeding from the extraction site 
also um, there is going to be numbness for the initial two to six hours and we need to tell the patient that he needs to be really careful in this period not to chew not to eat anything so that uh, until um, the numbness wears away so um, there is going to be the difficulty in feeling of uh, feeling the lips and the cheeks and the tongue uh, due to the numbness and also we need to tell the patient that he does not need to spit excessively uh, he can uh, you know uh, ingest the blood he can swallow the blood that is coming in his um, uh, mouth from the extraction site and he do not need to spit because spitting is going to create the pressure and it can dislodge the clot and the clot is very important for healing so moving on to the application of cold and application of heat so i'll explain why we need to apply cold for initial 24 hours and why we need to apply heat for the next second and third days so what application of cold does for the first 24 hours is that it is going to provide an anesthetic effect because it is going to it is going to diminish the nerve conduction so the nerve conduction is going to decrease and this is going to lead to the anesthetic effect and what we need to do is that we need to do intermittent applications we're not going to keep the ice in that area for a prolonged period of time just going to apply it for one minute and then going to leave it then apply for another minute and then going to leave it so uh, vasoconstriction so what happens is that there's going to be vasoconstriction and because of vasoconstriction it is going to reduce the amount of blood that comes into the extraction site and it is also going to reduce the exudation of fluids into the tissue space that is going to limit the swelling and also we need to keep in mind that we need to avoid prolonged use of cold and we need to use it intermittently why because it might lead to a compensatory vasodilation and if the vasodilation occurs it is completely opposite to what we need more vasodilation means more bleeding and more complications so we need to keep in mind that there needs to be only intermittent application of cold for the first 24 hours we need to tell this to the patient so moving on towards the application of heat now we need to do this on second and third day and this is important to relieve the swelling and the stiffness so what the application of heat does is that there is going to be a lot of vasodilation in that area and it is going to increase the circulation now increasing the circulation and increasing the blood in the area of uh, you know wound is going to help in clearing all of the you know toxins and the breakdown products and wash away all of them and also it is going to lead to the greater influx of defensive cells now all the neutrophils and all of the defensive cells are going to come over there all the immuno uh, uh, immunology system is going to be activated and it is going to lead to the uh, better healing and it is going to lead to uh, you know um, a proper healing without any kind of infection in that area so now let's talk about what kind of diet the patient needs to have so for the first 24 hours we need to ask the patient to stay on liquid diets on fresh juices or on the soft diet for which a lot of chewing is not uh, required and we also need to ask the patient to have protein rich diet in order to uh, get better healing and a faster recovery so we also need to tell the patient to avoid hot food hot beverages for first 24 hours after the surgery remember that we need to keep that site cold for the first 24 hours and also avoid the food that need excessive chewing and also obviously avoid carbonated drinks we need to avoid the carbonated drinks also uh, you know during the normal uh, periods uh, as well and especially after the extraction or after having a surgery because it can interfere with your healing okay now talking about the pain relief there is going to be some kind of discomfort in uh, initially after the surgery and that's completely normal but uh, we need to tell the patient that he needs to start having his pain medication before the anesthesia effect wears off because 
um, soon after the numbing sensation goes away there is going to be a lot of pain obviously there is an, there has been a kind of surgical extraction a surgery done so there is going to be a pain and discomfort what we need to do is that and what we need to keep in mind as a dental surgeon is that we need to avoid prescribing patient any kind of medication that can interfere with the healing and um, talking about uh, painkillers we need to avoid aspirin because it has an anticoagulant effect and it interferes with healing so we need to avoid aspirin also what we can tell patient to do is that start warm water rinses after 24 hours and uh, he needs to add uh, salt in that to especially um, clean and soothe the area and also to reduce the swelling and we can ask the patient to do that for at least four times a day and we can also tell the patient to use uh, any antibacterial mouthwash to you know uh, avoid any kind of infection in that area so talking about antibiotic therapy that is uh, only recommended uh, only if we uh, have done a, a kind of surgical extraction when you have done a simple extraction and it was completely fine there were no kind of uh, infections uh, going on uh, under the roots and in the periapical area so you do not need to provide any kind of antibiotics but if you have done bone guttering while extraction and you have done a kind of uh, aggressive surgical extraction so you need to provide patient with an antibiotic therapy and that basically differs according to the condition and according to the places so i'm not going to mention each and every antibiotic therapy that we can give but um, it is only recommended as I already told before that it is to be done only if there is bone removal and any kind of aggressive surgical extraction. Also uh, uh, if we have applied the sutures we need to tell the patient that uh, you need to come back for um, uh, like uh, the suture removal uh, after 7 to 10 days if we have applied any kind of sutures that are not degradable on its own. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Make sure to subscribe my channel, like my videos and share it with your friends. And also follow me on Instagram for more amazing contents. I do share my um, clinical pictures of my cases on my Instagram. So you guys can go and watch them um, and uh, share it with your friends.